Next we have Christopher O'Leary. Christopher is a photographer and media artist living in Los Angeles. His current research project, Cloud Chambers, studies the aesthetics of cosmology through documentary photographs and algorithmically generated visualizations. Hi there, Chris. I'm, I'm uh, Chris O'Leary. Thanks for having me. And um, the previous pre presentation, Robert, uh, actually explained so many of my motivations as an artist. <laughs> it's a nice way to introduce um, my next thoughts. So um, I start with um, this object, which is a cloud chamber, and the title of the work that I've been working on for the last few years. It's been largely in a research process uh, up until now, but I'm um, going to be showing it uh, next year in Pasadena. So um, the cloud chamber is a 20th century device that first kind of rendered some of the invisible environment, the sort of ambient activity that's happening around us. Um, and what you're seeing here is the cloud chamber in the Griffith Observatory, um, which is a tiny understated little thing in the basement. Um, and what you're seeing is alpha particles, beta particles, and electrons that are kind of um, seeped in the environment around us. Uh, they, they come from the matter around us, but occasionally uh, you might see one from outer space. Uh, when I interviewed um, Dr. Krupp, the director of the observatory, I asked him, is this still a relevant tool to science? And he said, this isn't science, this is spectacle. This is spectacle that brings your body in relation to the universe, which to me is a good description of what installation art is like, or, or video art can be like, a kind of embodied experience. Um, so the cloud chamber became a model for me to understand how astronomical instruments expand our ability to perceive the universe and our place inside it. So for me, a, a funny dovetail to images data is a pixel as particle. Um, so this is really what my process is for this project, um, algorithmically altering how photographs ultimately work. So as we parse uh, reality into ever finer parts, atoms, quark, photons, quanta, we're uh, straining to observe ever more esoteric phenomena, dark matter, gravitational waves, and more. Electrons may fuel my camera, photons might enliven my sensor, um, but ultimately I'm making pixels. That's as fine grain as I can get with uh, photography. Um, through custom software and generative processes, I'm trying to model how scientific behaviors uh, can be encoded into photographic materials. So um, this is actually a weird artifact of something I was making in which I um, produced a grid of pixels uh, which could apply force to other pixels. So what you're actually seeing here are little force lines. Um, and this is more of a structural thing, something I wouldn't necessarily show in a finished piece, but I liked that it sort of referred to astronomical imagery. Um, so throughout this presentation, you're going to see this weird pattern throughout the whole thing. And this is one single image that stretches 20,000 pixels across that I created for this, this presentation. And what it actually is, is a, is a visualization created with every single photo I'm going to show in this presentation. So what I did is I resorted all of the pixels based on color. There's some however many photographs, however many pixels have been resorted and spread across uh, the entire presentation. And then I've applied a kind of scientific pro uh, principle to this, in this case, uh, the orbit of black holes which generate gravitational waves. So I have a little model of, of particles kind of orbiting, and they pass <laughs> over the image and kind of distort it in this unique way. So um, a a particle is, or I mean, a, a pixel in a, in a photograph is made up of five numbers. X and Y position, red, green, and blue. And if you can fit anything into that system, you can essentially code it into a photograph, which is actually a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple thing if you break it all the way down. So I've been doing this kind of weirdly imaginative stuff in my studio for years, kind of more in the world of science fiction than in, in actual science. And I was feeling a bit loopy, and I really wanted to like get out of my studio, engage in something real. So I started for the kind of first time in my life um, being a documentarian, and I started visiting labs and kind of trying to learn about the instruments of astronomy. So I, um, in 2016, I did a residency at the Las Campanas Observatory, as Robert mentioned, um, to uh, kind of shadow the scientists who were observing on the Magellan telescopes, and this is one of the. You can actually see both of the twin telescopes there on the top of the hill, and this is the moon rising 
um, behind the telescopes. So throughout this residency um, and in other places that I visited, uh, I started documenting how these instruments work, what their experiments really are, and how they shape our knowledge. Um, I went to study, in, in particular, spectrographs, um, in, which is the large portion of what astronomy really is, um, and especially down at Las Campanas. So these are some of the instruments. <coughs> And here I am um, taking a selfie on the mountaintop with the Magellan behind me. And you can see the base camp there on the left where we lived. And um, you can see the kind of environment this is. It's actually totally unique. Uh, and on the Earth, the Atacama Desert is one of the driest places in the world. In fact, it rained for four of my 10 days that I was there. It was totally <laughs> um, So uh, ultimately, I was there to study spectrographs. And so I spent the sort of most useful nights for me with the night spent with the instrument scientists, which isn't really what I expected. I expected to sit with the astronomers and sort of like watch some discovery happen. But what I really um, found was that uh, the instrument scientists kind of provided me the most important information. So I spent a couple nights with them while they tested their machines and made sort of sample observations and collected all the data that came from those and, and from a few other nights. So this is an example of a, a spectrograph that came from the IMAX um, instrument in the Magellan. And I've applied this kind of false color uh, filter that was available in, the, in the, the software that the scientists use. Um, this is also a spectrograph uh, taken with the MAGE instrument. Um, and this is actually a test image using the LAMP. And the LAMP is a, um, a way for the scientists to sort of calibrate and know that the spectrograph is working uh, correctly. So this pattern of lights that you see here sort of um, confirm that uh, the, the instrument is working correctly. Now, scientists probably wouldn't think that's the most interesting thing to show, but I actually thought it was really fascinating that there's this sort of aesthetic representation of chemistry that allows them to uh, understand uh, that the machine is working correctly. So this pattern that you see here is actually all the pixels from this presentation that have been sorted by color algorithmically. And there's a nice, nice kind of um, rhythm or rhyme to the spectrographs, if only from an aesthetic perspective. Um, a sort of personal note about this is one of the reasons I have been so compelled um, to go to these places and talk to these people is because I find this to be an incredibly optimistic endeavor. Um, the idea that uh, multinational institutions, universities, governments, um, private donors, individuals come together to do this incredibly laborious work, um, to me is really inspiring in a really dark world that we live in. So this is a, a clean room that's um, there at the Las Campanas Observatory where they work on these machines, they need to keep them super cooled at all times, the room has to be totally clean in a, an environment that's very, very dusty. Um, so just the sheer work that goes into this, to me, um, kind of blows me away as an artist and the, the rigor that goes um, behind these things. So I'm personally very inspired um, by what I see here. And it's actually something that's been happening for a long time. This is the DuPont telescope, um, which has been creating spectrographs for decades. So um, I visited some other uh, labs as well. Um, this is actually a dark matter detector that's in a basement at uh, Occidental College. Um, I called someone up and said, hey, here you've got a dark matter detector. Can I come check that out? Um, and uh, I was so struck by the aesthetic of this thing. It looks like a time machine. And in fact, the name of this device is the time projection chamber, which the scientist chuckled when he told me, like, isn't that ridiculous? It is sort of silly, but, but um, it's, this is where we get science fiction aesthetics, obviously. Um, so within this device is a bunch of really interesting things. So this is actually looking through the side of it. Um, behind the sort of pattern you see in the back, uh, there's solar sails hanging, hanging suspended in this device. Um, you can see these sort of spindles going across. These are um, steel wires that have actually been woven in the lab by the scientists themselves that are part of detecting this esoteric matter. So in my interviews with the scientists, um, the story that I was told that I found so beautiful um, was that they were looking for detections to happen inside that box, um, but they would only come from a specific direction. 
And I was like, how could they only come from one direction? So what it is is um, the galaxy is rotating, there's a cloud of dark matter all around, and we're sort of moving through it. And so from our perspective, there's a, essentially a headwind of dark matter coming from the constellation Cygnus. Um, so I went out and photographed Cygnus, and here's my representation of this sort of headwind, where I've dragged the pixels kind of across the image and in three dimensions toward the viewer um, as a way to sort of represent the story. So here's where the tension in my work really comes in. I have these like documentary images I don't really know what to do with, um, and then these visualizations which really feel like the art to me. So um, the, the pixel sorting that you're seeing in the back is sort of the, the fusion of the two. Um, another visit I did was to um, the Whipple Observatory, um, the Smithsonian's site out at, uh, um, outside of Tucson, and this is the Veritas, one of the Veritas telescopes. Um, it's a beautifully mirrored surface here, and there's four of them, and what they do is they detect gamma rays from um, other galaxies. So when these gamma rays hit the atmosphere, this is again the story I was told uh, by the scientists, when they hit the atmosphere, they cause these sort of particle showers um, that, that emit a particular type of, of radiation. And that is what the, um, the, this mirrored telescope actually sees. And it's able to sort of resolve backwards uh, to the source uh, to understand something about the source. Mm -hmm. So these are photographs that I took of the night sky above the Whipple, um, and then have kind of algorithmically generated these sh uh, showers of, of particles. Um, Gravitational waves have been on my mind for years. Um, so this again is sort of a, uh, a simple representation of um, the motion that I learned about when I made a piece a couple years ago about gravitational waves, which was actually shown um, in Stephen's show, uh, blanking on the name. Um, um, uh, uncertainty. Uncertainty, yes, last year. So uh, um, in this piece, uh, I generated a model of a black hole um, including the jets, which you, you spoke of a moment ago, and um, including this spiral that is generated uh, when two black holes orbit each other. And when I made this piece, or when I first started coding this piece, um, this was purely theoretical. And since this time, they've actually made observations of this, so it's actually a real thing now. Um, so I revisited it with my, with my little visualization here. So this is, again, the spiral passing over my pixel-sorted image, uh, images. Um, creating this sort of wild pattern. So a little bit of artistic <laughs> license there, um, but that's where I'm going with it. So this project um, is, like I said, unfinished. It's been in the research phase for quite some time. Um, so I'm looking forward to finishing up for the COSPAR conference, hopefully um, next summer, which is the big physics uh, and astronomy <coughs> conference that's gonna be happening here in Pasadena. So check this space.